You probably already know that I passed my first professional exam. So I gotta tell you about it. I'm going to tell you about it. But wait, hold on. Let me show you how much books we had to read, how much textbook we had to read for this particular exam. Hold on. Uh, hold on. This is <coughs> this is how much books we had to read for the exam. I don't mind that my textbooks are rough. I bought most of them second and they were already rough when I got them. Plus, I could have been more careful with my textbook. First, let me tell you how medical school works. So medical school is divided into three parts. We have the preliminary, the preclinical, and the clinical. Preliminary is your first year. It lasts for just a single year. And in your preliminary year, you're going to be doing basic sciences like physics, chemistry, biology, English. The second is your preclinical. Preclinical is what I've just finished. These are most of the books we use in our preclinical. Preclinical is lasting for one and a half year. So that is three semesters. For us, it lasted way more because of the strike and a COVID break and stuff. But finally, we are done with it. So in preclinical, we are going to be doing three main courses, which are anatomy, biochemistry, and physiology. Anatomy is like the largest of each all. Anatomy is divided into five parts. Anatomy has the gross anatomy. So this is gross anatomy textbook. This is Kate Moore clinically oriented anatomy but we generally call it Kate Moore because of the author is Kate Moore and if you are using this textbook you have to use it with an atlas too this is an atlas that is used together with this Kate Moore it just helps you see the picture of things that is being described so this is gross anatomy and gross anatomy is talking about the structures of human body at gross level that is at the level which the eye can see when we are studying gross anatomy we study it by regions for example, the first part we study is the upper limb, then we study the lower limb, then head and neck, then we have thorax, then we have abdomen, we also have pelvis and perineum. So all these regions are regions in gross anatomy that we study. And after studying it in class, after doing the theory in class, we also go to the cadaver lab or the anatomy dissection room and we see all those parts. So we dissect and see the structures like how it really is in the human body. And we also have embryology which is the study of the development of human. So, embryology textbook is not so big. And we also have histology. So, histology is microscopic anatomy. Histology is basically studying the human body at the tissue level. Then, we now have neuroanatomy. It's, it's just generally studying the nervous system. Those are all the anatomy textbooks that we used. See, I told you, anatomy is like taking the biggest proportion. Then, we also have physiology. So physiology, I use just one textbook for my physiology, which is Ganong. So these are I generally study in my preclinical. The first thing I do is to study the slides, the slides that we get from class. After studying the slide, when we still have time before our exam period, I will check the textbook and I use just one textbook, which is this. If I don't understand these parts, I mean any part I'm trying to read in the textbook, the next resource I will use is to go to internet. I will just browse it on Google or look for a youtube video that explains the topic i don't like using multiple textbooks i'm not that hard working a student and the final one is biochemistry biochemistry is just one textbook and this was the only textbook i also used in my preclinical we call it vasu divan so the, the actual name that is written on it is textbook of biochemistry for medical students but it's written by vasu divan something about all of those things all the three courses i've mentioned they are courses people study for four years biochemistry is a course and people study this course for four years anatomy is also a course people study for four years so is physiology and we get to study all those things in like one and a half year which is why medical medicine seem quite tasking though i uh, though i believe people that are studying this individual course for example a biochemistry major student is going to study in more details than we are studying Okay, now that I've shown you my textbooks and how general, how medical school general is, let me now talk about the exam. And the exam is not something one really prepares for in like few months, two or three months. It is something you start preparing for from the beginning of the semester. There's a way the curriculum is designed. After each region, I told you that each of the courses, they are divided in regions, right? Anatomy has five subdivisions and each subdivision even has regions. 
So after studying some parts of anatomy, we will do a test. For example, after studying the upper limb, the lower limb, and general anatomy, we wrote our first anatomy test. Then after studying the general histology and general embryology, we also wrote our second anatomy test. So you know this time it is not so big and it is easier for you to read and even go in depth during the time of preparation for this test was when we had the time to actually go in depth study textbook use several resources and try to understand it when the exam is closed during the mb period i don't think you will have enough time to be using multiple textbooks or all those stuff so my advice for you if you're a preclinical student is when you still have time during your test please take your test very seriously like Take your test seriously and see your life depends on it. Try to score as high as possible. Not because you are going to feel good by scoring high, but because during the process of trying to score high, I mean, you are going to learn a lot. And once you've learned it very well before, to learn it again during the MD period is going to be quite easy for you. During my test, I worked very hard. And when I was preparing for the MD, for my MD exam, which is, you know, the MD exam is quite funny because we are going to be examined on all of those things now can you see how big the textbooks are and you know, the funny thing is that they can ask questions from anywhere for most of our exams they don't give us options in our theory they might give us 10 questions in anatomy they'll give us 10 questions and we are supposed to answer all the ten. they believe that you know you are going to be dealing with human lives and anything can come to you so you don't have option than to treat the person that's why you have to have a wide range of knowledge when it was about one and a half months to my mb exam i printed all the topics that we are supposed to know for the exam on one paper and also wrote the numbers of these i had left that was, i had the one and a half months then that was when i started doing proper mb preparation remember i told you that preparation starts from the beginning of the Preclinic house, you know, I've been preparing for tests and all these things, but actual preparation for MB took me one and a half months. And during the period, what I was basically doing was to just revise and review what I've learned before. The reason why it was a little difficult for us was because we started our preclinic house since 2021, and we get to write our MB in 2023, which means there are some things we've learned long, long ago which we've not reviewed ever. So you have to go and review those things again during the one and a half month i was literally studying several hours almost every day except days where my head can't take it no more to make my study fun and less boring i always try to switch my study location sometimes i will study at home sometimes i go to the library i go to the reading room i study outdoors like i study in weird places during this period we were also having revision classes which turned out to be very very helpful though it was stressful and yet brainstorming was also an important part of my preparation i was brainstorming with my housemates then i have something in my head but i'm not sure of it i don't have to say it and finally the exam day came my guy are you ready to kill this mv <laughs> oh god oh god oh god oh god <laughs> <laughs> the exam spanned a period of six days in two weeks. On the first day, we had anatomy paper one and paper two. Paper one was MCQ, paper two was theory. We have just finished our first MCQ, our first paper, which is MCQ. And we are waiting for our second paper. And most of us are actually revising. You could be lucky and check something that's going to come out in the essay. It's going to be 10 essay questions. So that's just what we are doing. On the second day, we have biochemistry, same way, paper one and paper two. And we also have physiology on the third day. On the fourth, we had anatomy steeple chase. And this steeple chase is another interesting part. So in the steeple chase, we are all going to be in the lab. On the lab table, there will be places called stations. There are like 50 stations, if I'm not mistaken, for anatomy. So on each station, they are going to put a specimen. They can put anything. They can put a bone. They can put an organ. They can put whatever on each station. You are going to start at a particular station. At each station, they will ask you a question. Identify the specimen. They can ask you another question. What is the function of the specimen? And you are going to have one minute to answer the two questions. At the end of one minute, you are going to move to the next station. If you don't move, the person behind you is going to push you because you are already wasting the person's time. I think that's why it is called steeple chase because you are literally chasing yourself. It's very easy for you to get destabilized in this kind of thing. My advice for you, if you are doing your steeple chase, try to be as calm as possible and pay attention in your practicals because you'll be questioned on this thing. And finally, on the last day, we had our Viva. Viva is the oral interview. 
so you are going to sit and meet a lecturer for my anatomy viva it was pretty straightforward the man asked me two questions and i got the two questions right and that's generally how the exam went if i'm going to give any advice the advice is during your preclinical when you are still having your test make sure try as much as possible to learn all those things be serious during your test period because there's just so much you'll be able to do when the exam is closed so work very hard during your test period and you have to work hard during your exam period too but your in course they are very very important and also try to have fun during the week try to enjoy yourself because generally in my preclinical i'm still going to make a video on my preclinical work, but i honestly don't have any regrets looking back i don't have any regrets because I did well academically and I could also do things outside academics that I'm proud of. So I think that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.